Hi, this is Linear Algebra, Section 2.2, the inverse of a matrix. So we want to be able to find the inverse of a matrix, and we're going to do this three ways, which one way is kind of cheaty, but it is using the calculator. So we're going to need this little formula here. If I give you A, and those components are A, B, C, D, the A inverse is going to be this piece, which we call the determinant of A, and then multiplied, we got to modify our matrix a little bit. You're going to switch along the main, main, main diagonal, and then you're going to change the signs on this diagonal going up here. But you're going to leave those two in place. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to find the determinant of A. So the determinant of A would be going like this, multiply. So I'm going to get negative 8, and then I'm going to subtract off what I get when I go this way. So that would be negative 3. So and then I'm going to end up with negative 5. So A inverse would be equal to 1 over that negative 5. And then I got to do my switcheroo. So I'm going to change these two. So I'm going to get a negative 4 and a 2. And then I'm going to change the signs of these other two and then go ahead and shoot that scalar in. So I'm going to end up with 4 fifths and then 3 fifths, negative 1 fifth, and then negative 2 fifths. Voila! That's how you find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now another way is to go ahead and type it into your calculator, which is what we did, was what I did down here. Notice this right here. You can just do the caret up and then do a negative 1 and hit enter and then that will find the inverse. So this is not raising to the negative 1 power but it will find the inverse for you which is what it put out right there. The other way to do this is with augmented matrices and so we're going to plant in matrix A and the identity matrix for a 2 by 2 and then you use the dimension that you need to use and then if I go ahead and row reduce it, I'm going to end up with the identity on the other side, and then the inverse is going to what be what remains. So let's try this way. So this would be my setup. What I have is the matrix A and the identity 2 by 2 set up in the same matrix. Now I want to do row reduction on this. And really you should be pausing this and see if you can do the row reduction on this and sort it out. So I multiplied the second row by 2 and then added to the first. Now I'm going to multiply the second row by 3 fifths and add it to the first row to get rid of my target there, the 3. So now I'm just going to take this one by 1 half scalar and this one by negative 1 fifth. So now I went ahead and I turned AI into IA inverse. So whatever I'm reading right here is going to be my A inverse. Sure enough, that's identical to what we found over here. And notice on my calculator, I can also go ahead and do reduce row echelon form on this matrix, and that's what I get. Same, same. So what is this A inverse thing doing for us? Well, if you look right here, I have my A inverse times A. What does that equal? Well, that equals my multiplicative identity, which I will sometimes need. So if I'm solving an equation, maybe I need to get down to this basic form in order to solve an equation. We'll show you that in a minute. Now also, similarly, we can do this. That's equal to the same thing. So now we want to go ahead and solve AX equal to B by using that inverse. So this will be a little bit different, but we're going to be using algebra and doing it with matrices. So here I have my AX, that's a vector, is equal to B. And so how do we solve this algebraically? Well, I divide both sides by A in order to isolate this X. However, with matrices, I can't divide matrices like that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take both sides and I'm going to have to multiply them by the inverse. Now you have to be careful because if I put this inverse on the left-hand side, 
I'm going to have to put it on the left-hand side for both. Otherwise, you know, you found out that multiplying two matrices by each other and then doing commutative property doesn't always work. So that's why we have to do left justified, left justified. So x is equal to a inverse times b. So now let's solve this matrix. What I can do is I can set up a 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4. If you notice, that's the same matrix we used in example 1. And this is going to be t times x1, x, oh, I'm sorry, we have x and y. Now I'm just going to take A inverse, which would be just the coefficient matrix, and put it here on this side over here, and then I should get what I want to end up with. So X is equal to X vector A inverse, which is my 4 fifths, 3 fifths, negative 1 fifth, negative 2 fifths, and I'm going to multiply that by my 3, 2. Now, if you notice down here in the calculator land, I already did it. So I'm going to get 18 fifths and negative 7 fifths. So that would be your solution. So you might say, well, why can't we just do row, reduce row echelon form on my augmented matrix that I could get from right here? Well, this just gives you another tool in your toolbox to be able to use. Plus, it sets us up to set up an algebraic system with this inverse that we do have. And if we wanted to multiply this by hand, we could have done that too by taking the 4 fifths here, multiplying by the 3, 3 fifths times the 2, add them together. That's what I'm going to end up here with. And then I can take the negative 1 fifth times the 3, negative 2 fifths times the 2, add them together and get this negative 7 fifths. So for a 3 by 3, now we want to go ahead and find the inverse of this matrix that we do have here. We're going to use the augmented matrix method that we just showed you in order to do that for a 3 by 3. So you do the setup where I do have my A and then I have my I set up in the same matrix. I want to reduce row the left hand side, which means everything, and then we can get our inverse. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. You should too, and see if you can check it out. So I took this one and I put the uh, changed the order. So I had a one up here. We always like to do that, and so I switched that around. And then I multiply by negative four to this row to add to this one, and then I end up with a zero here. And then I did that for all those pieces. Now I want to eliminate this negative three. So I took a three times this row and added. And so then that got rid of that one there. Then this one, I'm looking pretty good. I just need to multiply or divide by two. So I divided everything in by two in this row. And then I'm all set up to eliminate this two and this three by multiplying by negative two times this row and adding, and then negative three times this row and adding, and there I am. So now I'm left with my inverse. And so now we can write out what A inverse was, assuming that this was A. Fun. All right, cool. Now let's go through the theorems that we've used and what we need to know, and then we'll be done. So we talked about this now is that we do have this matrix, and then if this is not equal to zero, then A is invertible, which means we can find the inverse. And that inverse is found by this. We also showed you the augmented matrix method to do. And now one thing, though, is that if the determinant is 0, then A is not invertible. That's the determinant. And then we have A is invertible if and only if determinant of A is not equal to 0. Theorem 5, if A is invertible n by n matrix, oh, and I didn't say this, but to have an inverse, you do have to be square. They have to be square matrices in order for this to work. Then for each B in R to the n, the equation ax equal to b has the unique solution x equals a inverse b. So now some other things. Both of these are invertible. If one of them is, the other one is. Then if you do the inverse of the inverse, you're going to end up with a, similar to the transpose stuff that we did. If a and b are n by n invertible matrices, then so is ab, and the inverse of ab is the product of the inverses. So we flip these around just like we did with the transpose. So AB inverse is equal to B inverse A inverse. Part C, if A is an invertible matrix, then so is the transpose of A, 
and the inverse of A transpose is the transpose of A inverse. That is what it says right there. Theorem 7, if n by n matrix A is invertible, uh, it is invertible if and only if A is row equivalent to our identity matrix. So that's what we were doing. We were taking A and turning it into the identity, and then whatever is left over was our inverse. And in this case, any sequence of elementary row operations that reduces A to the identity matrix also transforms the identity matrix into A inverse. And that's what we did with the augmented method. So theorem 7 is all talking about what we did in this example here. All right, so that's all I got for you right now. You have your gifts, and, and I hope that you did enjoy this. Ways to find the inverse. Have a great day.